good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we are back with a brand new pay-per-view review for you guys. It is on Hell in a Cell 2022. We are going to be reviewing the show here. Haven't done a pay-per-view review or predictions or setups or anything pay-per-view related in a while. If you guys want to see that type of content return to the channel, please let me know down in the comment section below, please. I feel like some people look forward to the review. Some people don't really care, but you know what? If that's what you want to see, that's what you want to see. But Hell in a Cell 2022 card looking a bit bleak, Brad. Looking a bit bleak. We only have seven matches so far announced on the card at time of recording, but I'm going in open-minded. Usually the shows that you have a lot of high expectations for, you fall flat on your face, and the ones that you don't even expect to be an ounce of good end up being way better than you could possibly imagine, so hopefully that will be the case tonight. No Roman Reigns. The word on the street is Cody Rhodes is injured. We'll have to find out about that tonight if we even get a matchup. Potential Bray Wyatt and Fiend returning. Lots of speculation around this show, but would it be good? Would it be great? Would it be somewhere in the middle, or would it be shitty? We're going to dive into it tonight and discuss all the details and give you guys my honest feedback and opinions on every single match, feud, and where we go from here and everything in between. So that, that being said, man, let's dive into Hell in a Cell 2022 and, and dive into what took place at this show. So starting off our main card, man, we had the Triple Threat Raw Women's Championship match between the champion Bianca Belair, Asuka, and Becky Lynch. Very excited for this match because this is probably your three best women's talents in the world. I'm not, I'm not kidding right there. This may be three of the collective best women's wrestlers on the planet. And to have all three of these in one matchup going head-to-head, -head, I mean, this was great, man. You had a lot of great chemistry. You had a lot of great near falls. It was all over the place. It was explosive. It didn't feel like a daisical. It felt intentional. It felt intense. It was a very nice matchup that I, I highly suggest you go and watch, man. If, you can, if you're a women's wrestling fan at all, you gotta go check this match out. I had a ton of fun watching it. It was very intriguing throughout. I was glued to the TV. I didn't want to look at my phone for a second, man. You had some great back and forth between all three ladies. I do have some problems with this matchup though because Asuka took the L again as far as taking the pin. You know she's been on fire as of late and you know she took a huge hiatus coming back. It would have been not saying she had to win this matchup but I think Bianca pinning Becky would have been more telling here. I didn't like that they pinned Asuka. Asuka looked like a hundred bucks. She uh, to me she's the best women's talent on the planet as far as in the ring like nobody can nobody can touch her stuff I think but Asuka does take the L here by the pin to Bianca who does retain which doesn't bother me. It, it was more of just who took the L here, but at the same time, it was a damn good match, which was great for this show, and it was a great way to open the show, man. Kick-ass start to the show, and this is probably one of the better women's matches of the year by by far. Next up, we have Bobby Lashley taking on Omos in a matchup that I did not care about. You know, it's one of those matches where you just you just don't care, man. It's just one of those, but it was Omos and MVP. You know, it was actually a little bit better than I was expecting it to be, but I don't want to see them wrestle anymore, man. We've seen it time and time again now. I'm over the thing. It was, again, and it was better than I was looking into, you know, it was a lot better than I was expecting, however it still just wasn't worth my time you know, I think I would have rather been watching the NBA Finals rather than this matchup taking place here, I do have my Omos figure on the way, which is something to say but I don't know man, not, not much to talk about here it is what it is, two big men going at it, they they had a, again, it was cool to see some things here and there, I love to see you know, Bobby Lashley and his strength on display and his athleticism, but I just don't want to see this feud anymore, and that's about what I got. Next up, guys, we had Elias taking on Kevin Owens, all right? It's Elias. It's not Ezekiel. My Ezekiel figure hasn't come in. You guys get the deal. Kevin Owens taking on Ezekiel. You know, if anybody can pull off this feud and, like, what they've told here, it's Kevin Owens, okay? It's definitely Kevin Owens. I thought he's done a fantastic job in this feud, having to put up with the BS and, like, you know, the fake Ezekiel and stuff like that. Kevin Owens does an excellent job portraying this. Like, it just fits his character to be, like, dude, you're so full of crap. Like, I just love that part of the story. It is is a dumb story. It's been kind of fun though, the way they've done it. I, I kind of I've kind of enjoyed it. You know, I didn't really care for the match. The match wasn't bad or anything. It's just not something that I really care about in the long run, just because of who it is, I guess. I guess if it was anybody else than Elias, maybe I could get behind it, but Kevin Owens is so damn good. He makes everything work. He really is an MVP of WWE. Top five in the world. I've said it for years. I've said it for a long time on this channel. If you guys know me, you know how much I love Kevin Owens. He's so damn good. He's good at everything he does. He can make any program work with anybody, and WWE really realizes that, and I know they know that. I just wish they'd pitch him a championship bone, but this matchup was solid for what it was. KO does go over. I was worried he wasn't going to win the matchup, but he actually did. This matchup wasn't bad, but I enjoyed what Kevin Owens was doing here. I don't think this is the end of the feud, unfortunately. I think we are going to get some sort of like, I quit match scenario where Kevin Owens forces Elias or Ezekiel to admit that he's Elias, and it'll end up where he's about to kill him literally in the ring, and then he'll say, okay, I'm Elias, whatever, and then yeah, he'll end up losing because it shocks him or something.
something. I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on, but Kevin Owens wins, and I, I'm all right with that. Next up, guys, we have the epic six-man tag team or mixed six-man tag team. Or six, mix, six, six men, women's tag, mixed tag team match. Six-person mixed tag team match is what they're calling it. AJ Styles, Finn Balor, and Liv Morgan taking on the Judgment Day in Edge, Damian Priest, and Rhea Ripley. Now, I have a lot of things to say about this matchup. First of all, matchup was very good. I enjoyed it throughout. Thought th that everybody was very great intertwining. Secondly, Finn Balor taking the pinfall. Didn't like that whatsoever. Why do they do this man this way? They do it to him every single time. Finn Balor must take L's in WWE. It's like the man just can't get over the hump ever. He can't ever get over the hump. Also, another point in this matchup, AJ's 45, Finn Balor's 40, Edge is 48, and Damian Priest is 39. So all the older men are just putting it on in this matchup. Tons of great athleticism. Rhea Ripley looked great. Liv Morgan looked great. Just a fun match overall. Judgment Day's entrance was super badass, but the Judgment Day did win. I expected that. I think that was the right call to make here. I just didn't want Finn Balor to take the pin. Why couldn't Liv Morgan take the pin? Or even AJ Styles could have taken the pin. Why did it have to be Finn? I can't tell you, but uh, this was a fun matchup. This was a very fun matchup. I thought that it all played out great. It was very entertaining throughout. Great sequences, great things back and forth for all the teams, man. Good stuff. Good stuff overall, but Finn does inevitably take the pin and makes me sick. But it was fun. You know, it was a fun ride. I will be honest with you there, but uh, I'm enjoying these teams right now. We'll see what comes of it, but uh, yeah, I just I, I just want a singles AJ Styles, though, at the same time, you know? Like, we, we had the tag team thing. Give us a singles run. Give us singles Finn. I guess they just needed some teams for Judgment Day to squash or get wins over, so that makes sense, but yeah, good matchup overall. Next up, guys, we had the Mad Cat Moss versus Trash Corbin matchup in a no-holds-barred match, which is kind of insane. The statistic I found, it says something like, since mid-2008, any superstar from WWE that has been in a no-holds-barred match has ended up being world champion. Now, will that continue here? I don't know. I honestly could see Corbin having one reign before it's all said and done. Mad Cat Moss, I feel like, you know, he could potentially be something in the, fu in the future, but right now, man, I just can't get behind it. I didn't like the way he came onto the scene. I don't like the way he's been portrayed, and I ju he just looks like kind of a loser. Like, he's super jacked. I think he has a good look to him. I just I just can't get behind him here, and uh, this matchup was solid. I like that he got the comeuppance on Trash Corbin. You know, he put the chair on the throat and squashed it with a steel chair, which I thought was awesome. You know, trying to kind of elevated him there, kind of showed that he had that grit about him. He wasn't just rolling over and taking the L after returning, which was cool, but I don't know. I don't know what to think here. We'll have to see what comes of it, but Trash Corbin being written off TV, that's something I love to see. However, man, that pretty much wraps it up. Mad Cat Moss got, got revenge. He got his revenge on Trash Corbin, and that was, that was pretty cool to see. Not my favorite matchup, not a matchup that, you know, I was really invested in, but at the same time, you know, it, uh, it was what it was, man, and uh, yeah, we had uh, we had a good trash feud. Next up, guys, was our United States Championship match, Theory, Austin Theory, I, I cannot stand these name changes, versus Mustafa Ali for the United States Championship. This matchup went about 10 minutes. Pretty entertaining matchup. Mustafa Ali had on some sick-ass Chicago gear, and you guys know if you're from the hometown of the pay-per-view, you know what that means, right? You take the L. You get pinned on your back, and that's unfortunately what happened for our boy Mustafa Ali. I've always loved Mustafa Ali. Always thought he was fantastic, and uh, he, he looked great here. I thought that both guys looked pretty damn good here. I enjoyed this matchup thoroughly, but yeah, just uh, did not get the job done today. Some good back and forth here and there, but unfortunately, Mustafa Ali could not get it done, and he came up short in this matchup, but he had some cool reversals, some cool things going on. I'm not a big theory guy, but at the same time, as U.S. champion right now, he successfully defends it. You know, he doesn't give the bone to Mustafa Ali here. Austin Theory wins, and you know, you just, you just hate to see that. Holy purple titty, Batman. What a main event match we had. Hell in a Cell, Cody Rhodes battling Seth Rollins. Now, to set the scene, we gotta set the scene right, because coming into this matchup, a lot of wrestling news, Twitters, and, you know, all kinds of different media sites reporting that apparently Cody Rhodes had a torn pectoral coming into this matchup. You know, a lot of people wondering how severe it is, how bad is it, is he gonna be able to wrestle, is somebody gonna replace him? Tons of stuff coming in, tons of speculation coming into this matchup, right? So, we get out there, Seth Rollins comes out, he's got his sick-ass Dusty Rhodes mocking Cody Rhodes gear on. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't like the 
the gear that much. The kick pads were pretty cool, but I wish it would have been just better designed, I guess. Like, I love how he went with the Dusty Rhodes gear design. I just wish that he would have went, like, mix his own gear with Dusty Rhodes and kind of create a cool gear mocking Dusty instead of just straight up Dusty. But at the same time, it was pretty cool. You know, I I'm sure we'll get it in a battle pack or something like that. I don't know. I just think he has better gears that could be ultimates or elites. You know what I mean? But anyways, Cody comes out. He's got a sick... It it's the blue form of his jacket that he's worn, but he had he, he was wearing it in red. He had a sick-ass white and blue gear on. Very sick gear. Cody Rhodes-esque. He takes his jacket off, and his entire peck and upper arm was completely purple. Man looked like damn Two-Face out here. And he comes out, and he takes off his jacket. It looked brutal. His whole right side of his body was swollen. Looked like the Incredible Hulk or something, man. It looked like he had, like, some sort of plague virus spreading throughout his chest. It looked horrific. Now, I knew that's what people looked like when they had a torn pectoral or bicep, but I didn't know how bad it was for Cody, but after this matchup I think it's safe to say he's going to be gone for a little bit, because it's not going to be able to recover doing what he just did tonight in this matchup, because Cody just went out there and put on a 5-star classic with Seth Rollins with a torn pet. Now we have a lot of things to cover with this matchup because let's just get through the match. I mean the match was insane. It was it was match of the night. It was a bona fide banger. The whole matchup gave me AEW vibes. I even took to Twitter and talked about this. The whole matchup just had an AEW vibe to it between the psychology and the feel of it and just the way the layout was and the edge that it had. It just, I guess it's just because Cody Rhodes was in charge of the match, I'm sure. So it just kind of felt that way. You could feel the vibes all over it. Just a classic, man. What a banger. This is one of my favorite Hell in a Cell matches, I think, of all time. And I know there, there are some classics for sure, but this has got to be up there, man. It's got to be up there. It was, it was a banger. I enjoyed the matchup thoroughly. Just an epic classic, and it was just one of those that had me on the edge of my seat. Great near falls, great psychology, weaponry. Uh, just the added bonus of the torn peck and the visuals of it and how hard he was going. But this is my only problem with the matchup is that Cody won the match, which is insane. I think if it had WrestleMania, WrestleMania levels to it, you know, where he was going vying for the championship, he'd been written off by Rollins and put on the shelf, and he comes back and he has this torn peck and then he overcomes the odds to win the championship or win the Rumble or something crazy like that. I think that's a beautiful story, but having him go away after the torn peck and Seth Rollins taking all the damage and still losing to a guy with a torn peck, I don't know how that looks. I, I don't like totally hate it. I'm just I'm just trying to create conversation here. I'm trying to just kind of put it out there as something to discuss about this matchup, but what an insane match. Had me on the, the edge of my seat, like I said, man. Just a total insane match. Just a great, great match. I, I really can't describe it, but this show was pretty solid. I mean, you had some matches that I didn't give a damn about. I thought the triple threat was insane. I thought that the Judgment Day match was solid. I thought Theory and Mustafa Ali was solid. Hell, even Kevin Owens and Elias was decent, but this main event was insane. To have not a stacked card, I think this show over-delivered from what I was expecting. I, I thought the matchups that I was excited to see delivered, and the rest was about what I expected, I guess is how you would say it, but this was a classic. You gotta go check it out. Cody beats Seth. No return of Bray Wyatt or The Fiend, but that is gonna wrap up my review of Hell in a Cell 2022. I actually enjoyed the show a lot, man. I really, really did. I, I had fun with it. You know, it, it, it came in, it did its purpose, and that's all you can really ask for at the end of the day. But man, just Jesus Christ, what a banger we just witnessed, in my opinion. I, I loved it, man. I absolutely loved it. Greatness all around. But I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Leave me your thoughts down in the comment section below. I would greatly appreciate it. Before we get out of here, let's get into our random shout out again. If you guys would like a random shout out in a future video, all you got to do is leave me a comment down below. Below. Leave a like on the video. Be active on the channel. Maybe you could earn yourselves a shout out here on the channel. But let's go ahead and get into it. William House says, I think it's about time we got a five hour collection video. I need a new one to play in the background while I do things. LOL. And I think it is about that time. You know, I do want to get that video out. It's just one of those that takes a long time to set up. It will take me a whole complete day to set up the collection because I got to get every figure off the shelf. I got to, you know, put them all together there in one massive pile and then go through them one by one. So it is something I want to do. It's just something that I have to get all the figures down and then re-put them up and then edit the video and render it. It is a, it's probably going to take me over 24 hours to complete that video when you take into consideration taking the figures down, doing the video, like recording the video itself, editing it, rendering it, putting all the figures up, all those different things. But a huge shout out to William House for being active on the channel, man. I'm getting out of here. Have a blessed day and don't cross the line like uh, the purple titty did. You cross the line.